So with this, I'd like to thank all of those people and certainly thank this gentleman as well as all of his team members here at the New World Center. Uh, we've been many places with the kin. I've worked in many venues worldwide in what I do. And I can say with confidence that the staff here, the capabilities here, are second to none in the world. And we are truly privileged to have the opportunity to be together here. With this, I'd like to introduce for a welcome to the center and to Miami, uh, Mr. Howard Herring, CEO of the New World Symphony and our Grand Poobah here at the New World Center. Howard. Welcome, everybody. It's great to have you. All of you from Northwestern, so, well, most of you anyway. You got to know, um, I'll explain this in a moment, but Northwestern is a big part of the New World Symphony because in our group of 87 musicians in any given year, there's at least six or seven graduates of the Northwestern Music School, quite an amazing music school. Tony Marie Montgomery and her staff, they're making it happen. So great to have all of you. Um, I also certainly welcome you to this wonderful environment that is the New World Symphony, but also to Miami. Uh, we are ci a city that is becoming, and we are very proud of where we've, how far we've come, and we think that we've got lots to do in the future. So make sure that while you're here, get a little taste of Miami for those of you who are, are coming for the first time. How many of you are in Miami for the first time? Let me just see. Oh, terrific. Okay. You'll be here, then you'll come back. Um, I hope you'll be inspired by this place. One of your pillars is discovery. Uh, if you are inspired by the New World Symphony space, then you won't be alone. It happens very often here. This is an environment that's all about speculation. Um, I, I want to give just a few words about the building and the program itself that drives the building. So we're the New World Symphony. We also call ourselves the Hyphen America's Orchestral Academy. We're a postgraduate fellowship program. Our players come to us from all over the world. We have 87 in any given orchestra. It's the mission of the New World Symphony to train our graduates, the graduates of distinguished music schools to become leaders in the field of classical music. Leadership in the complex web of relationships inside an orchestra, leadership in representing the art form to those who are not familiar with it, and leadership in using culture to build community. Now, let me just click through here to make sure I've got this going. Okay, if one button doesn't work, you want to use the other button, right? All right, there's mission, okay. So we have our 87 fellows. They are, you can tell that this building's all about technology, right? And I'm not. Oh my goodness, okay, whatever. So as we build the curriculum for these these musicians who are with us, this fellowship program. What we do, we first of all approach, the, think about the aspirations of each individual player, and we then try to anticipate the future of the art form. And you put those two together and you make a curriculum. We play 70 concerts a year. We do an equal number of community engagement uh, facilities, uh, ex exercises. I know some of you are here from Colombia. We have a major program with the Academia Philharmonica de Medellin in Colombia, working there in person, working here in person, and doing the rest of it online. There's a 17, 1,007 alums who are making a difference uh, in the music world all over, their, all over the United States and beyond. And I want to share with you our vision statement. There we go. Why is this doing this? Okay, we're going to give up on all this. Forget it. We envision a strong and secure future for classical music. And we intend to reimagine, reaffirm, express, and share that tradition with as many people as possible. The key phrase is with as many people as possible. Well beyond the group of people who can simply afford a ticket on a Saturday night to a traditional concert. Beyond the ever smaller group of players who are coming along as students and who anticipate their lives as classical musicians. And certainly because we see the effect of classical music 
on the imaginations of our audiences, our many audiences, and it's especially the unsuspecting audiences. So in responding to mission and vision, we've become a laboratory for generating new ideas about the way music is taught and presented and experienced. This is a Frank Gehry building. You can see the asymmetry. It was designed between 2005 and 2008 based on a very specific program that supported our educational program, but also anticipated this building as a relevant community asset. And at that point in time, we were just in the early, we were in the early days of the digital re revolution. We opened in January of 2011, and I'm gonna give you just a few thoughts about what we've done in this laboratory. So first of all, I'm gonna tell you that online education is real. This is Michael Tilson Thomas, our founding artistic director, leading the Atlanta Youth Symphony from this stage in real time and for an audience that was part of a side-by-side -side program that we do here in Miami. If you stay inside about 800 miles and you use the low latency of Internet 2, you can work in real time. It's not a problem. We're developing online communities, one of them around a reference, um, an educational reference that we call Mosaic. We have nine partner music schools, we have con who are giving us the content for all of this, including our content. We have an effective search mechanism. We have 100,000 users and a ton of questions. We're using digital technology to engage new audiences. This is a shot of what we call wallcast. The front of this building is set up to receive projection. There are 10 fixed cameras here and a double set of, of microphones, and we are bringing people to the park for free just outside this building, and we do that about 12 times a year. High definition capture and simultaneous live performance. We're looking at an audience here, 25% of whom have not been to a classical concert in the last year. 34% identify as non-white. That's completely off the charts in terms of American orchestral audiences. And 75% of them have never been in this building. We've been doing it for five years. We see big future there. This is what it looks like from the roof of the building. So we are reimagining the relationship between sight and sound. I'm gonna play for you in just a moment a short clip of a, vi of a video treatment for Igor Stravinsky's Circus Polka. S Stravinsky arrived in the United States. He was poor and he had few prospects and they took him to see the heads of the Barnum and Bailey Circus. Circus asked him if he would write a piece of music for elephants and ballerinas. And he said that he would do that as long as the elephants were young elephants. You can imagine, Barnum and Bailey said, yes, they are young elephants. So he wrote that piece, and we have then uh, engaged a young woman um, videographer from, um, from California to set a video for this particular piece of music. So I want you to share this with you briefly. It's about 20 seconds. Let's see if we can make it happen. Nope. There we go. There's, thanks. There's 10 more of those in the can. We're going to continue that project of associating video and music. So that's a short overview of who we are. Um, you've come to this conference with big questions of your own. I want to share some of our big questions with you. First of all, it's very easy in the digital world to create a crowd. It's really hard to make a community. We think that we're doing that, but we're trying to understand how and why. Orchestras are playing at the highest level of excellence that they have ever played in the United States, and audiences are getting smaller and smaller. So we're asking the question, is there a deficit of authenticity? And is there a compelling combination of excellence in performance and authenticity? So we're gonna to try to understand that and try to become even more relevant to the larger population. If artists and cultural institutions are primary factors in reviving neighborhoods and districts, 
How do they take advantage of the groundswell of prosperity to which they have contributed? That's happening on Lincoln Road, as in part because of this building, we're trying to understand that. And we, we know that has applications around the globe. If digital distribution of classical music is free and ubiquitous, how do you create a sustainable financial model that blends access and values? In short, we're trying to bring a, an a artistic legacy classical music into the digital future. We're working hard. It's great to have you here. I look forward to meeting some of you over the next two days. Rob, great to have you. You bet. Thank you, Hard. This is truly a special place. Think of the words, laboratories, a crowd to a community, authenticity. Note that Howard ended with questions rather than answers in very kin fashion.